and welcome to Festival Speaks. Today is Tuesday, September 21st, I think. It's not Tuesday, it's Wednesday. This is 181! What? How are you? I'm Amy Beth, also known as Fat Squirrel on Ravelry and the Fat S Q R R L on Instagram. I'm your hostess, MK. I just realized I forgot to do something. Can I reach it? Oh, let, let's get really close. Let's. I love you. How are you doing? What should we talk about today? Do you have any input? I can read it with my mind. Can you see my spots? By the way, Brits, UKers, they call pimples spots. Isn't that much better? I'm sorry, there's so much crinkling. I forgot I was supposed to do something that was shameless and self promoting style. Wait, there's still one more thing. See, you're actually sitting on a basket and like seven books and a stool. There it is. <laughs> and what I needed was in your basket. <gasps> that sounds so dirty. <laughs> and now I'm gonna ask for money. So how, how's that going? <laughs> Let's just do it now. I've already, <laughs> I've already shamed myself. I just wanted to remind you before I forget that um, any donations to the podcast between now and the end of October, which will be Halloween. Oh my gosh. What do your kids want to be? What do you want to be? I don't ever dress up, but I'm just a fuddy-duddy. My kid totally wants to be a werewolf. How cute is that? I actually bought her a crazy mask at Target. Like, she was not with me. But they had this wolf mask that actually looked like a wolf and not a scary werewolf because I thought she really wanted the wolf aspect more than the blood carnage aspect. And also when you talk, it's jaw moves. And by the way, this is the first year she's worn contacts for Halloween. So she's quite excited that she gets to wear a mask. I'm sorry, there's going to be like noise of the world. It's right out there, the world. Sorry. Anyway, so she's not wearing contacts this year so she can wear a mask. Because if you don't wear glasses, like, that's, a, like, a legit thing, right? Like, you can't wear a mask with glasses. Well, you can, but it's terrible. So she's excited that she gets to wear a mask this year. But I thought, oh, this will be perfect. It's not plasticky, because I was like, she's going to be like, oh, it's too hot, I can't breathe. It sits on you, and then when you talk, there's, like, a chin strip, and you talk, and the thing moves. It's not like the Chewbacca lady mask, which is the cutest thing ever. But it does actually move. It doesn't make sounds. I was so proud of myself, and I splurged. I spent way more on it than I would normally spend on a Halloween costume because hi, they wear once. Well, they might wear it like seven times, but you know what I mean. It's the same reason I won't get the dog's costume, even though they're so cute. And even though Target totally has a squirrel riding a, like in a saddle or something as a dog costume. But anyway, I digress. Olive. Um, what was I saying? Oh, so I was so excited. She's not interested in it. She totally wants a gory mask, which I'm kind of like proud of because that's kind of cool. At the same time, I'm like, oh, this was so fun. This is like a real wolf person. And now you really you do really want to be the bloody, <laughs> disgusting, scary werewolf. Okay, well, that's really fun, actually. But I also disappointed because this mask was really cool. Anyway, that was all to say. If you make it to the end of the podcast between now and the end of October, You'll be eligible to win one of these prizes. Oh my gosh, are you kidding me with prizes this time? They're ridiculous. So prize, then how I'll do it is like the first person I draw can choose a second, third, in that order. So first prize, well, prize A, I don't, prize square, is this lollipop yarn and this is her Indian summer colorway. Five rows each of pumpkin spice, saffron, moss, blue ridge, wood pile, with a mini me pumpkin spice. Come on, these pumpkin spice people. And it's lollipop. And this is for beefcake, beefcake base. <laughs> so that's one prize. Circle prize is Lifestyles of the Rich and Famous. <laughs> Caviar dreams of champagne wishes. Okay. This is 50-50 Super Rush Mario Silk, right? Mm -hmm. I think so. It's fingering weight. Fingering weight. And then prize hexagon is my On the Spice Road. What? Well, it's yours. What? 
made with Miss Babs for the colors and Madeline Tosh for the gray. What? You know you want that. So, yay, enterprises. You can donate at thefatsquirrel.com. If you scroll all the way to the bottom, there's a yellow button. Or if you're on a PC or a laptop or an actual computer, not a computer, it'll just be on the right. Yay. Thanks, people. I appreciate your support. Okay. Okay. Okay, so that's enough of that. Let's talk about other stuff. I wish there could just be like an honor box that wouldn't have to give you that spiel, but like there's no way for me to do that. I could just sit on a flatbed of a truck and leave a box out. That'd be awesome. Hmm, alas. Okay, I can't fold this right now, apparently. So, this week, there are no shenanigans. Are there? No, I don't think there are any shenanigans. <laughs> Apparently me folding this shawl is a shenanigan, which it should not be. Hmm. Okay. Okay. We're about to go to teacher conferences. <sighs> teacher conferences make me so nervous. Yesterday I went to a doctor. I went to a podiatrist. Oh, it's like my week of anxiety just coming in on me. <laughs> I need to drink. Not really, but kind of. Um, <laughs> but there are no actual fun shenanigans. Except now I can say I have bursitis. <laughs> Actually, I really can't say that. She just said I have bursitis in my foot, but now I'm like, oh, that's so old timey. I'm gonna get an apron and start telling people I got bursitis. It's my goal in life. But part of shenanigans are non-knitting shenanigans. I made some stuff. Ah! So this is not a kid along, but we are gonna totally do that kid along in October, people. We're doing it. I needed to put a thread out. If I don't remember, somebody can just throw a thread up and I'll sticky it. Tell me what kits you're gonna work on. <laughs> so October will be kit along. Not the kit along mask. Is, is that a thing? I forgot to ask my husband. The kit along massacre, my space device is over there. I can't talk to space right now. Anyway, no, I'm not really talking to space, I'm just talking to the Wi-Fi, but it's like space, it's my space, it's internal space. Um, but anyway, so we're going to do Kit Along in October. So I would love to know what kits you're going to do. Because then I might need that kit. I'm such a sucker for a kit. I'm not going to lie to you. I love the Mary Maxim catalog. True confessions. I totally enjoy it. <laughs> I have fantasies of having a house that's large enough that has enough, like, flat empty space for like holiday decorating that I could make some sort of plastic canvas ch like town. I don't have the house. Don't buy me that kid. <laughs> but I still think about it. <laughs> Whatever. Okay, but so, and so this was not a kit, but it's kind of like a kit because I got the, that counts as a kit. I got the loops from Harrisville and they came in color pack. So that's a kit kind of. I would count it because, you know, I'm not real uptight about price. <laughs> but I made pot holders. Um, Yarn Hoarder's daughter. Oh my gosh, what is her name? I want to say her name's Heidi, but that's not right. Is it? I'm sorry. Yarn Hoarder's daughter made me a beautiful pot holder and gave it to me at the Knitting Pipeline Retreat. Oh my gosh, the dates have been announced for the next one. Where are you going? Paula is flirting with winter storm disaster. She's so sassy. Anyway, it's early in February. And I'm like, ah. Um, so she gave me this pot holder and I've loved it. And I've used it so much that it's kind of like filthy and a little bit scorchy. <laughs> in places. So um, I was like, I have got to, I need to wash that one. I'll pretend that I've washed it since then. But I think quite frankly, I have not. It's a pot holder. It's not like a dish towel. Don't judge me. Judge me. I don't care. So, so finally I decided to make myself some more. Anyway, so I had this pack of loops from Harrisville Designs because this is made on the Jumbo Loom Kit, which is the, I want to say that it's 10 inches versus 8 inches, but I could be wrong. I don't remember, but it's the Jumbo one, which is so awesome. I didn't bring my loom with me, but it is all metal. It's not like a plastic one. And the loops really do stay on. I remember at one point when Tova was little, little, like grandma or somebody got her, um, 
one of the like just generic ones I don't remember with like I think polyester loops quite frankly and they don't they didn't stay on the loom they kept popping off and made her insanely frustrated so but this one they totally stay on just fine and they are cotton loops and you can get them in color packs this is the fall pack which has orange red yellow and black I wish we were brown but that's okay you can bust out some Halloweeny stuff with those black ones but what else did I, I don't think I say about that, but I, so actually I started this one a lot, like, I think I actually made this, that's not, yeah, that's true. I totally made this one when I got them, probably last year, truth. But then I was like, it's too much ketchup and mustard, and so I had to put it back with the kit, because I was just like disappointed in myself for making ketchup mustard one, but now I'm okay with it. So sometimes when you don't like something, you just gotta put it away for like a year, and then get it back out, and then you're like, oh, okay. And then I had this one, like, the warp or whatever, done. And the weft was like a third of the way done. So then I finished this one this weekend. And then I made this one. Yee! How fun. And now actually Harrisville used to have like a, I think it was called a pot holder wizard, like a weaving wizard. I couldn't find it this time. I don't know what happened, but it was so cool. So Harrisville, if you're listening, I know you're not, but maybe you are pixie chick. Um, that was awesome and I can't find it anymore, is it? I mean, I was very impressed that it even existed in the first place because it was very fancy. You could like put in your colors that you wanted in the on for the, like the warp and weft, and it would show you what the pattern would look like. You do like some supremely complicated looking pot holder patterns, which is awesome. That's right. Anyway, so those were those. I love useful things. Okay. So I do have spinning that's finished, but it's still wet. So I'll show you about that. I'll show you about that. I'll show you. That's what this says. It's like show you about that. I'll show you about that next time. Um, so we'll go right into knitting. So this episode now will contain knitting. I know, right? I can't give you the, the outline beforehand. <laughs> it's always halfway through. So we're going to talk about knitting, and then I'm going to have one question that somebody asked me on um, Ravelry PM words and things. Can I, should I tilt this way more? I'm trying to minimize glass glare. I know that's annoying, but unless I keep my face completely turned this way away from the window, it's hard not to get it. And it's hard to do that. People, I finished ish. Almost. It's a it's buttons away. It's not even a block away. It's blocked, but it's buttons away from being finished. I totes my goats finished my excuse me poncho. Right? This is a laugh a minute. Are you going to Rhinebeck? I might be wearing it. I don't know if I'll be sassy enough. Also, I don't know if it'll be cold enough. Too many crickets. Why is it so warm still? But anyway, oh my gosh. So I'm not going to put it on right now because the neckline needs a button. Because I didn't do it like the pattern said. The pattern is made for the nut, the neckline to be like a funnel neck, turtlenecky kind of thing. And I'm very much like, <laughs> This is one of the few shirts I have that I have not cut this ringer out of. Some lame. Pretty soon I'm going to start cutting the sleeves off my shirts and just chewing backy or something, but whatever. Um, so it's, this is supposed to be closed, but I wanted it to be open, and maybe I should have, like, A, I should not have made the opening so big, because now without the button on it at all, it's like jazz, not jazz hands. Not jazz or size. Flash dance. That doesn't have anything to do with jazz. <laughs> but anyway, so I think I should have just left it open like this much. I left it open too long. So when I put it on, it's very confusing. But it'll. I think it'll be fine when I get the button on it. Right. Mm -hmm. See, this is what it should be like. And I'm glad I didn't make it like that, I don't think. Well, maybe. That would have actually totally worked. But then what would I have done with all this stuff when I was talking to people? Oh, that's actually kind of sassy. But I guess to make it happen because I got buttons coming. So crazy. Guano crazy. But it's going to be awesome, right? 
I totally make it, made it because I wanted a blanket to wear in the winter. Now I have one around the house. Like I really was not planning on wearing this to public and then Malia's like, I'm totally making one for Rhinebeck. And I was like, I wasn't planning on wearing mine out because mine is like hand spun in weird colors. But now I'm gonna totally wear it out. Whatever, Hey Steven West. Just saying. <laughs> so this is Hello Yarn. Um, and it was just like a random color. It was not a regular colorway. And then this is Rowan Superwash Worsted. The pattern is written for DK, but you know, DK Worsted. You can't take that as a, you don't take that as truth when you're making an actual sweater, by the way. <laughs> but I'm much bigger than Mr. Stephen West, so it seemed like it was made sense to make it at a bigger gauge. Yeah, it's crazy down. But it's kind of fun. And now... Is it worth getting my thing for? Maybe I'll, can I remember to put a picture in here? Probably not. Now Brooklyn Tweed's new lookbook is out for the fall for their quarry yarn, which is like the bulky. There's a crazy poncho in there, which is like not quite a poncho. It's more like a swancho. Cause it's more like a sweater poncho because it actually does have a sleeve. It's just that the sleeve is like like very, I don't know, it feels like Uma Thurman should be wearing it. By the way, Uma Thurman and I do not have a similar body type, so I don't know why I think I should be wearing it, but whatever, I don't care. <laughs> it's super cape. Okay, I'm just gonna. Oh, right back. <laughs> How's my computer chair? Did you like it? <sighs> See, if I just turn my hair like this, it won't matter that the glare's only on one glass for lens, right? That's less distracting. Clearly. Okay. So book Brooklyn Tweed released the Auster A U S T E R by Michelle Wang. I'm just gonna show you me. You see it, right? Can you focus on this computer? Not computer, but video camera. Ah, you can kind of focus on it. Ah, you, you get the idea, right? It's bulky, poncho, turtleneck. What am I thinking? I totally want this stupid thing. I may have yarn over there. I did not buy Brooklyn Tweed's quarry for it. Not because I don't think that that yarn is awesome. Actually, I've never touched that yarn, but all of his other yarn is awesome. But for my size, it was going to be like a $200 poncho, which if you got $200 for poncho... Boom, go for it. I did not. <laughs> so mine is going to be made with um, eco wool. I think it'll totally make sense. Because even though this is technic quarry, it's technically a bulky, it's 200 yards to the 100 grams. Because of course, like the other Brooklyn Tweed yarns, it's all wool and spun by Harrisville Designs. What up, Harrisville? Boom. It's a little warm in this blanket. <laughs> but I can't stop wearing it. Ah! Um, so it's really like, wait, it wouldn't be, and it's, what is it? Is it three and a half stitches to the inch or is it three stitches to the inch? I can't remember. But I really want to do cables all of a sudden, like intensely. I don't know what that's about. I mean, I like cables, but I, I feel like a serious need to do some, th I think it all goes back to that Thea Coleman at SSK class. She had too many cables on that table and I maybe want to do them all anyway. So I may have bought Eco Wool to do it. It seems like it would be a good patch, patch, match, because it's lightweight. What is it? 250 grams. It's like 473 yards. That's pretty close for, is that called grist? I think that's called grist. Yardage to ounce to weight. Meterage to whatever's. Um, I mean, literally, I was doing the stinking eye cord bind off on this thing. Is there a thread in there? What's happening? Oh, I can't see. Anyway, I was doing the eye cord bind off when this got released, and I was like, oh, I just. <laughs> and I did not finish this like in a like ca -ca way. I finished this in like oh way because I really was gonna plan on using up my all of my um, hello yarn because I had more to go. I probably have another two ounces of this stuff, but I just could not go any further. <laughs> I'm just like, no. Ugh. I run into the night. 
So I had just decided to buy enough, which was just binding off, and then this thing got released, and I'm like, oh, I clearly need that. My size requires like 750 grams. No, that's not even right. It's more than that. Like 1,100 to 1,300 grams. What? It takes five skeins of eco for me. Those are huge skeins. Those are two and a half skein skeins. What's wrong with me? I still think it's going to be awesome. <laughs> I'm just gonna call this the year of unflattering knits. I'm all about it. I follow this chick on Instagram. Okay, this is getting way too out of control. But there's this chick I follow on Instagram, and she's like a tight like she's. I should, actually I shouldn't say that because maybe she. Okay, I won't say who she is, but her clothing sense is amazing. She wears all like handmade clothes, and they're awesome, and they're all like boxy. She looks so amazing in them because she looks like she's projecting who she is and you don't even think like, well, maybe that should be silhouetted better. I'm too old for that business anymore. I'm just going to wear fun stuff. Okay, I'm not going to go totally crazy. But give me three years and I probably will. But right now, <laughs> it's the winter of unflattering knits. excited about it actually because I totally want to make that thing and then I want to wear it I feel like I need gauntle to, I don't know why this thing makes me think it's Uma Thurman's I just can't help it I'm gonna wear like gauntleted gloves with it <laughs> leather not knitted that's too much hand knit come on settle down not that crazy crazy I think it'll be fun though don't you so okay that's the finished object <laughs> Was that like 20 minutes? Oh, it's like 20 minutes of finished object. That's what I do here, people. Okay, so let's talk about works in progress. Oh my gosh, I'm so hungry and it's like 10.30. It's 10 o'clock and I'm starving, people. I had toast with jam, it was delicious. Oh my gosh, somebody asked about the pickles. I have got to get that together for you because I have now tried all the pickles. I was waiting for the pickles to like mature before I talked about like what I thought about them. So I need to get that to happen soon. Forgive me, I'm being coy. Uh, but I will make that happen soon because now I've tried all the pickles. I feel good about half of the pickles things that I made. It's not bad. I feel very good about that jam I made that's got too much pectin in it. Yeah, that's good jam. It's delicious. And I also, somebody also asked if I will do bread. I will totally try to do a bread episode. I've been trying that no need thing. I've never liked it before, but I did find one recipe that I actually do enjoy. So maybe I'll talk about that too. Because I know bread can be intimidating to people, but those no need things are pretty approach friendly in some ways. Like sometimes the technique can get crazy in terms of like one, like there's a, a school of technique where you heat your Dutch oven um, and then you put your, like you preheat your Dutch oven to like 500 degrees and then you put your bread in the Dutch oven. And that's, that's technically a little scary. I've done it and it's still scary to me. <laughs> 500 degree heavy metal Dutch oven is kind of scary. By the way, don't use your fancy ones. Use like a king, like a, a lodge one. Because your plastic handles do not want to be heated to 500 degrees. Also, I don't think you're supposed to heat an empty enameled Dutch oven to that high. Apparently they do, but I have very bad luck with the enameled Dutch ovens. I've never bought the Le Creuset, the fancy, fancy one. But like I have cracked some Martha Stewart ones. I've cracked some lodge ones, the enamel on them. We're cooking, I think, too high. So I'm afraid to put, I did finally break down and get a new one and I'm gonna try to be careful with it. So I don't put that one in the oven to preheat like that. Um, I do put the like lodge cast iron one that's not enameled and that works fine, by the way. You can totally make bread in that thing. I have a lodge cast iron bread pan, which is awesome. But maybe I should save that for the actual thing where I talk about bread. Let's do that, okay? Okay. <laughs> So works in progress. Okay, I am gonna take this off. <sighs> Cause although it is almost October, and like thankfully it's now cool in the mornings at least. Like we're getting into the 60s at night, but it's 89 I think is the high of the day. Anyway. Oh, I have another finished object. Oh, this is a good one too. I finished my Mimaw socks. Remember I talked to you about last time? 
And this is with Diabolical Yarn. And the Tarhi base, which is 100% super, 90% superwash Tarhi, 10% nylon. This is her Moulin Rouge colorway. And I finished socks. So these are socks from my mom. These are not a pattern that is a pattern, but they're kind of like one of Wendy Johnson's toe ups from her book, like toe up pattern, toe up sock pattern. But it's not exactly the same because. That pattern was only for 64 or 72 stitches, and Mamma needs 56 stitches. So there's that. It's just like a little diagonal lace thing. No biggie. Find it in any texture book thing. Regular old heel. Slip stitch heel. Yay. I know I should have brought blockers over. I'm sorry, sometimes I fail. 70% of the time I fail. True. Ta-da! So yay those! And I have lots of that yummy red stuff left over. There's still a bunch left. And Mamma is a size 9 and she's 56 stitches. And the only reason I say that is again, so you know like exactly how much was left. Quite a bit. I would say I could make a pair of kid socks with that, but since my kid now wears a size 9 and a half, I think. It's not always, yeah. So yay, that's, that's the finished objects. And now I have works in progress. Okay, since we're talking about socks. I have a pair of socks. This is going to be the Blueberry Waffle pattern by Sandy Turner. And that is a free pattern on Ravelry that I think is DK. But I am making mine with fingering weight held double. So this beautiful yarn not long after I started podcasting, I feel like in the, definitely in the first year, maybe even in the first six months, um, Marigold Jen sent me, I purchased a skein of her yarn and then she sent me, I had favorited another skein. And so she sent me the favorite skein. Marigold Jen, shush, shush. And this is the one, so this one is called Brown Sugar and it is amazingly gorgeous. And so that means I've been hoarding this for like three years, right? It's actually been caked for like an entire year. And I have tried to make like four things with it and just been like, no, those don't do that yarn justice. So I rip them out. Finally, I was like, dude, this skein has been <laughs> caked up for so long that it's going to like have a mouse is going to come take it away from her bed and then I'll be so angry. And then I'll just tear apart the walls of my house. And then it'll be like a scene from the burbs and it'll just be terrible. So we're not going to do that. Or the Money Pit. I can't remember which Tom Hanks movie I'm talking about. <laughs> um, so I decided to hold it double and make house socks because I feel like then I'll get to see them. They won't ever, well, they might be hidden by shoes because I wear Birkenstocks, people. Like, there's some room in there. But I can oh, look, look at it all the time and this is totally not going to show how amazing. Oh, that's kind of good. Oh, there we go. Right. It's like, oh, it's brown. Tricks you. It's like the most beautiful chocolatey rainbow. It's gorgeous. So these are blueberry waffle. Did I show you the one I have done? You talk. So I'm holding that double. So I'm using size threes. Um, and the thing that blueberry waffle is 48 or 52. I can't remember, but I'm doing 48. I can't remember how many the blueberry waffle is, but I have really wide feet. So I have one done. And I was afraid that I wouldn't have enough. Actually, I think I would have if I had not made a crazy long cuff. But so I used contrasting. This is Madeline Tosh Geode. Also held double. This is, I can't remember. I think this is sock actually. But I know it's a super wash one. Right in the purple with it. I'm so proud of myself. How do knitters, non-knitters ever feel good about life? That's like the only thing I... <laughs> Knitting and are like the two things where I'm like, I did something good. If I didn't have that validation for my life, I would just have to not go on. I can't find, there's actually that exact same purple. I can't really probably see it, but there's like almost the exact same purple in there. So exciting. <laughs> so yay those, I'm pretty excited if you can't tell. I just did, I did a Laura Lineman Afterthought heel. I was kind of afraid of picking up um, those heel stitches 
because I'm holding them double, but it was not hard at all. It was not an issue. So yay, that's. This is also me trying to make Socktober really a thing. I don't know, there's prizes. I'm not doing any of that stuff or like any chatty stuff because I'm just terrible at that. But I really want to make a push to get some socks done this October. And in fact, I'm kind of like waffling. I thought maybe I would do the Stephen West knit along and I'm like, oh, it's gonna take away from my sock knitting. So I can't decide. I can't decide. Anyway, so there are those. Yay! And then, okay, just in terms of like things that are easy to show you. And since we're holding things double, that's a thing to this week. I'm knitting a cider press hat that's by Amy Christopher's. This is a pay for pattern, um, which I bought a long time ago. And I made a hat with another fingering weight yarn held double. And I loved the texture of it. It was so insanely squishy, but I did not like the colors of the yarn necessarily. So I decided to actually make one that I might like. Right. Shut up. This is Malabrigo. I should just leave the needles in. That's that's a look. Malabrigo Machita. Makita? 100% superwash. It's a single ply. And 100 grams is 420 yards. This colorway is Mandragora. Mandragora. Yes, 890. Wink. Eh, you know, things and focusing and whatnots. There we go. That's better. It's so gorgeous. Right? That is an amazing colorway, by the way. Good job, Malabrigo. So anyway, so I'm holding the double. Um, the pattern has a tubular one by one cast on. I love a tubular cast on, but I prefer the provisional kind. Um, they give pretty similar. I just do a crochet cast on. Basically, you just crochet cast on, and you can actually do whatever cast on you want provisionally but I like the crochet cast on because you can zip it out at the end um, so just do a prov I do the crochet cast on for half the number of stitches that you're going to need plus one so this is a, let's say there's a hundred stitches cast on it's not um, you just would so you would provisionally cast on 51 but you can just look that up by finding you can find that by looking up <laughs> provisional tubular cast on it's my favorite um, so yeah, and I actually did this one flat and then just kind of the cast on part and then just kind of like s stitched up in the back. You can't tell anything. I did a Jared flood pattern though that had the provisional tubular cast on and I loved it. So I need to figure out which pattern that was because that was the first pattern that I'd ever used that used it. Um, and so it was the best. Mm, so anyway, so yay, this hat is so fun. It's a lot of purling, but I don't care. Well, I care a little bit, but that's okay. Yay. Any minute it's going to be cool up to wear a hat. <laughs> Maybe. El Nino. Anyway. Ta -da. Okay. So then the next thing I have to show you is my stripe study. And that's by Vera Valamaki. And I am using... <laughs> not at the end of a row. It wouldn't matter if I were, you still couldn't see a darn thing. Uh, so this is hand spun. This is, I believe this is Superwash Tarhi, if I'm not mistaken. Superwash Tarhi from Fat Cat Knits. And this is spinach souffle colorway. I had eight ounces of this. And then my, actually my main color, that's technically the contrasting, is Swan's Island, which I dig so hard. Swan's Island. This is their fingering, oh, sport weight, sorry. <laughs> Liar. And so it's 185 yards for 40 grams. This is the ochre colorway. Is it not amazing? I just need a museum of gorgeous golden yellowy things. Mustards. I would have this. You know, I'd have honey from <laughs> Quince and Company. And then it would have, was this ginger? Oh, from Malintosh. All the golden, beautiful colors in my museum of yellows. Anyway. <laughs> so I'm doing stripe study. And so this is it. Can you tell how awesome it is? I can't. 
don't worry, I can't either. Because even when I'm in the end of a row, it's still like, Meh? what a knitting. But I'm getting close. I am on my last ochre stripe before my last band of hand spun. And then I'll do the ochre band at the end, which is like that down there. But it'll be so fun. This is an asymmetrical shawl. It's like a that. I'm very excited about it, people. I think it's gonna be awesome. I love some wool and spun garter stitch. It's all there is to life. <laughs> anyway, so I like, I'm really enjoying this swans out. I can't talk for how it's gonna wear or anything like that, but it's beautiful, it's lightweight, it has a great texture. It's reminiscent of the Brooklyn Tweed in terms of texture, because again, that's a very lofty woolen spun, which we're used to, but it has a little bit, it has more um, twist or strength to it. I don't know which one it is, but it's got more twist, I think, but, and I don't know what fibers it is, but it's awesome. I would say it would be a good substitution, is what I'm trying to say, without saying words that make sense to humans. Hmm. It's dyed in Maine. Of course it is. Maine. It's Rambouillet, which makes sense. I think the, the Jared Flood yarns are a Tarhi Columbia. So those are all very close related. It's spun at one of the oldest woolen mills in New England. Harrisville used to do this too. Harrisville. Anyway. <laughs> it's 100% made in the USA. Yay. So anyway, I really dig it. Yay, Swan's Island. I'm excited about that yarn. Okay, and then the last thing I have to show you, I started a sweater. This is the Hero, which is by Julia Farwell Clay. I think that's what I wrote. See my fancy show? <laughs> Julia Farwell Clay, yes. And so, I don't know if you've seen this sweater before, it is um, written for both a cardigan and a pullover with sleeves. I'll be doing a short sleeved pullover version because that is my favorite version of a sweater. If it's worsted weight especially. So I have the body done, almost. I think I have like a half an inch left. And this is my hand spun. Right. This is a CVM, um, which is a California Variegated Mutant, which is a version of Rommeldale that's colored. And this is a three ply that I spun last year. I think I started spinning it like before Rhinebeck and was still spinning it during Rhinebeck. And the Hero has three colors. So it has the main body color and then it has yoke. Well, I had not planned on doing this sweater, by the way. Um, I, but it occurred to me that I did not have enough yardage to, I was just doing a Miranda which is that one with the kangaroo pocket. But I didn't think I would have enough yardage. I was cl I was kind of close-ish, and I thought I do not want to try to mess with that. Because it's top down, um, which is great for yardage, but I didn't want it to be too short. And blah, blah, blah. Yada, yada, yada. I was, I was concerned. I think I would have had plenty, by the way. But so I decided to do something with like a yoke. So then I, so then it was like trolling the stash to try to find things that would work. And I wanted it to be mostly hand spun. So this is what I'm going to do my progression so it'll be like <laughs> body first color second color third color Whoa! like that it'll make that sound even I have no idea what this color is or what it is I didn't put a tag on it but I really dig it blue and brown is the west this is not hand spun this one this one this is peace fleece I kept the tag even. I'm on game. I didn't have a tag really when I couldn't keep it. Shush. This is Inca Malinka Blue. Gosh, be slice. I love your faces. So this is Inca Malinka Blue. And then this is Three Waters Farm, like, into the rain or something on Finn. I think it'll totally work. What do you think? I think it's going to be great. By the way, organize your stash better. Because as I was reorganizing these shelves, because we're now going to podcast in front of them, I found this behind something, and this would have totally worked as my third color, but I didn't, I don't know if it even existed. <laughs> so I literally bought and spun four ounces when this was right here. 
And it's even the right weight and everything. Really? Whatever. <laughs> and that's even into the world, which I probably bought it right back. Whatever, it's fine. But so yay that! Um, I'm doing shaping in the back and in the front, so for the butt and the bust. I'm doing darts. I made mine too close together this time, but you can't tell whatever sign. I was looking that closely. Um, so yay, I'm about to start that. So it'll just be short sleeve. I'll do like ribbing and maybe, I might do like half an inch or like three or four rows or something before I start the color work to join it all together for the yoke. Excited. Okay, and then, oh wait, that's it. Okay, so the last thing we'll talk about, Linda, who is, I don't know, I'm going to go with Dino Senzo, Dino Senzo, Linda on Ravelry, asked me in a PM um, why I don't dye yarn anymore. And I've had this actually asked a couple times, so I'll just talk about it. If you're not interested, I totally get it by. I'll talk to you next time. There's nothing else coming except awesomeness. Um, but so several people have asked me this throughout the, when I meet them usually, so I'll just answer it here so that people who I don't get to meet can know too. Um, I actually really enjoyed dyeing yarn and I've dabbled with the idea of doing it again. Um, but first, let's say why I don't do it right now. <laughs> There's two reasons. Um, for one reason, I really like to do semi-solids and... Sometimes the variegation that happens in a semi-solid with dye breaking and stuff like that, you can control that a lot of times, but I feel like, and again, it's probably just because I was not as experienced, but I would have dye breaking skeins and I would, and that's just where the color does something kind of funny in a place. And it would really stress me out whether I could sell those skeins or not. <clears throat> so that was very stressful. Like it was very stressful to try to dye to a exact model. Do you know what I mean? And have consistency, but then still be hand-eyed. So that was very stressful to me because I am very left brainy. I don't want to admit it, but I am. I am not the dawning of the age of Aquarius. <laughs> My signs are like Aries, Virgo, Cancer. I'm really uptight. Anyway. <laughs> so there was that. So that made me uneasy. It was like very, made me anxious to sell stuff online because I was very concerned about whether or not it was going to be what somebody expected. As a customer, I'm not that uptight. Like, you know, unless something is wildly different than I thought it was going to be, I'm usually not even phased. But for some reason, me being the producer made me very anxious. But perhaps even more so, or just maybe in addition to, I don't know, um, we have a smallish house, which is great. I love our house. And um, it's a jajillion years old and it's all wonkity and stuff. So I shouldn't be worried about ruining it, but <laughs> dying in the house was very stressful to me because it had to like shut down. And actually, I think when I was dying, was Tova in school yet? I don't know if Tova was in school yet. Maybe that was part of it. Now that I think about it. Anyway, Toba's my daughter. Um, that may be part of it. Maybe she wasn't in school yet. But anyway, so it was very stressful because I would have to kind of have, for us, and I'm sure other people can do it different ways and beautifully manage things. But for me, it was like the kitchen had to be like on shutdown for a whole day or sometimes two to three days in a row. And it was very stressful for me. <laughs> You know, when I'm sewing at home, like, if something needs to be addressed, I can stop sewing and get up and do it, and then just go back to sewing, and it's no problem. But when you have dye, like, when you have yarn in a dye bath that has to be there in a certain amount of time, and then you switch it, because, again, you're looking for consistency, that was not as much of an option. It was more like, I'm going to ruin the $400 worth of yarn that is in production at this moment if I walk away, which was stressful. Um, but... So that's why. I would eventually like to do it again. Um, I may approach it like as I'm doing an outside studio, which I, that might work for me. Um, but I would really like to be able to offer like a maybe a woolen spun yarn. 
or something that's a little different. Um, so that's, you know, it's percolating. I would like to maybe do some fibers. It's percolating, but I have not, so anyway, so it's out there, you know, just so you know. It wasn't like anything bad, I didn't stop doing it, but it just stressed me out and made my house crazy. <laughs> and I'm a super house person. Like I'm, you know, my husband's like, your car hasn't moved in four days. I'm like, I didn't need to go anywhere. I'm fine with that. <laughs> I mean, I left the house and breathed air, but I didn't have to go out there. You know what I mean? <laughs> so yeah, okay, okay. So anyway, so that's it. Um, but yeah, so it's kind of percolating. I know that I know you don't need bags are not a consumable product. I understand that. So like I understand for like the long-term longevity of my business, I would like to have something that's a consumable product. But I haven't found the right approach to it yet. So I'm waiting for the right approach. I'm not just waiting for it to fall out of the sky, but I'm waiting to try to figure out how to make that happen. So that's all. Anyway, I think this is enough of me talking. What do you think? So I'm gonna try to get pickles happening or something. Maybe I'll just talk about it in a blip. And there's bread on the horizon. I think those are the things. Is that the, are you keeping minutes? Thank you, secretaries. <laughs> I'll talk next time. Bye.